We're gonna make a melee weapon by importing a 3D model. We are going to change the material so that it is shiny and we're gonna upload it to Steam. I will also show you how to avoid mistakes and save a lot of time. This video is long, make a bookmark, hit Ctrl D, save a link to this video, come back to it when you want to continue making your weapon. Just hit Ctrl D, make a bookmark, this way you don't have to think about it later and waste time trying to find it. Hello and welcome, Ivan Plays here. I made already two tutorials about gun mod making. You can watch these, you can subscribe for future tutorials. Now we have another update to the weapons tool pack by Steel Raven 7. We can now uh, use the templates for melee weapons, for example. That's what I'm gonna start with today. So I'm gonna download the Ravenfield tools pack weapon test. Remember to press the three dots and details to find out if you have the latest version. If the date is newer than the date on which you download it, download again. If you have issues with your zip file, download again. Just download again, just download again, and it will probably solve 20% of your problems. Once we have it, right click and extract all. Or hey, use WinRAR, use 7-zip, use WinZip, just Extract it. Under no circumstance, double click it and work inside of it. Just extract it so that you have a folder. Come on, come on. 90%. All right. So here we go. I'm just going to move this to a nicer place. All right. Here we are. Crowbar is the name of a project. So I'm going to name the folder like that. And now I start at Unity 5.6.3p1. You can try using a newer version. Just get Unity, it's free, use the free version. Pick Open, navigate to the location of the project, in my case it is Crowbar. As soon as you see the Assets folder, don't click anything, just go for Select Folder. And Unity will launch, and it might take a little bit the first time you do this. There we go! Slowly, slowly loading. All right, that took maybe two, three minutes. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to scenes down here and open the weapons lab scene, double click it. And we already have all the guns inside here. So let's just check that we do have the model in here. If you do not see a model of a gun here, then you need to install Blender. In the second video tutorial that I made about guns, I show you how to do that exactly. You just have to make .blend files, be opened with Blender, and then reload Unity and everything will be fine. Just go watch that video, you can find the link in the description. Anyways, let's assume you do see that weapon. Pick the gun you want to work with. We're just gonna take one of the ones available. And what I want to do is I want to do a melee weapon. So wrench it is. I guess I'll just take the wrench no repair because I don't care about the repair part. All right. So as you can see, it's a kind of a grayish blue. So we have to t tick this thing and now we can see it. And we're going to just go to the AK and untick this thing. Be gone. Okay, cool. So as a first test, we can just press a play button. Wrench works. Beautiful. What I want to do now is basically just replace the uh, 3D model. So let's find the 3D model. When we have this clicked here, we can see the objects inside. In this case, this is the wrench here. And on the right, we see wrench mesh filter, which says, hey, which 3D model am I supposed to use here, fella? And Unity tells them, well, mesh filter, old chum, just use the wrench mesh. And if we double click this, well, first of all, we, it gets selected down here. And second of all, Blender shows up. Basically, we can create our own model or I'm just gonna download one. So here I am on Sketchfab, one of the nicer uh, websites, communities for getting models. Blend Swap is also good, but we're just gonna go ahead and search. What I want is a wrench. All right, so I'm gonna search for that. Then I'm gonna click all results. And now we're gonna go for filters and click features and downloadable. Cause by far not everything you can download. Wait, I didn't want a wrench, I wanted a crowbar, my bad. Crowbar. So now we have a low poly crowbar game model. That, that looks good. And crowbars, that looks good too. This one looks too high poly and smooth, this one also. But uh, I don't, I mean, yeah, it might be okay. Might be okay. Let's see, if we download this, Creative Commons Attribution. So basically we have to mention their name and link back. Uh, this one... Looking good too. Creative Commons attribution non-commercial. Well, a bit more restrictive, but as long as you don't sell it, it should be fine. These ones are a bit too low poly. Look very much like uh, Unturned to me, even though I don't remember. But I don't want to use these right now. Instead, I'm going to go with this model by Michael Makiewicz. Also Creative Commons licensed. Let me just download the original file, fbx. Oh yeah, the file format can also uh, like have influence on what you should download. 
So while this is still trying to download, let's just unpack this one. Extract all, extract, here we go. So here we have, uh, let's see, textures, okay, source, okay. So in Blender, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the wrench is selected. Wrench, all right, wrench here. And now I'm going to import file, import, and uh, this depends on the file format. In this case, it's FBX. Let me just double check. This might not be available by default, so you might have to go to user preferences, open this up, go to add-ons, FBX, FBX. Indeed, I had to check this one so that it would actually get imported and then hit uh, save user settings. So I already did that. Anyways, as I said, file import FBX. Do not confuse import and export. I'm going to paste the path and go to source, rowbar, mesh, FBX. All right. So it looks like it didn't really matter whether I had the, crowbar, uh, the wrench selected or not. Okay, so what we can do now is in uh, object mode, for example, navigate, move it around with G, use one to uh, one three seven nine to uh, turn by ninety degrees or one eighty on the numpad. So yeah, okay, we're gonna make this smaller, rotate it like this and like this, basically just replacing the wrench with the crowbar. This looks actually quite quite okay already. Yeah, yeah, okay. So what we're gonna do now? Let's just see. Okay, these animations they don't um, they don't apply to the row bar yet. So what we can do is select the row bar and then the wrench, and hit Control P and and hit Control P and then Object. And now we can see the wrench now contains the low object, which which we're gonna rename to crow bar. And if we move the wrench. The crowbar moves with, and if we do the animations, the crowbar moves with. That is quite good. So what we could do now is right-clicking the wrench, pressing Tab to go into edit mode, hit A a few times to make sure that everything is yellow, and then hit Delete and Vertices, for example. All right, so if we do the animations now, it seems to have adapted. What we're going to do is we're going to save this as a copy. Save as... Wrench UB crowbar. All right, so now we have a crowbar. Let's go into Unity. It should have, uh, yep, yeah, here is the crowbar. It has this one here. So if we go to wrench in the hierarchy, as you can see here, we can change this. How do we do this? Oh, yeah, we press the little uh, circle there, and now we can select C -R -C -R, crowbar. Um, and then this happens. So the crowbar is insane, big and huge. And we are, actu we are actually inside the crowbar right now. So why does this happen? Uh, let's go back to Blender. This happens because this model has transformation applied to it. It has a rotation applied to it. It has scale applied to it. And it's actually 0 0.002 of its original size or something. So it's extremely huge right now. What we can try to do is just apply everything. So we're going to right click the wrench and hit Control A and then apply scale. Then we're going to just Control S to save and see what Unity has to say to this. It will reload after a few. Okay, so now the wrench is in here. That is good. We can see that it is a bit off. Or is it? Yeah, it's a bit too high. So let's uh, do the same Control A and then location. And then save. Don't close Blender yet. This might have been a huge mistake. Yep, that's, that was a huge mistake. Let's undo that. And actually, let's undo some more until we get the wrench back. So now we want to compare what kind of uh, transformations does the wrench have? What kind of transformations does the uh, crowbar have? So first of all, we're going to apply again Control A and then Scale. So this is all one. This is all one as well. Okay, so let's save this way, all right? Let's see what Unity gives us like that. Um, okay, I'm highly confused because now we have a wrench and a crowbar here, but only the crowbar in here. Fascinating, really, fascinating. Uh, actually, it's not that fascinating because the models are treated individually. So it's fine. 
So let us test this thing. It seems to be working. And it seems to be working on them as well. Let us apply the rotation though. Save again. Double check that everything is fine here. Yeah, looking good. Instead of modifying the location, let us change the position of the center. So this we're going to copy and insert here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to move uh, the center of the crowbar to the center of the wrench, I guess. So let's right click the uh, wrench, hit Shift S and hit cursor to select it. That's right. And now we're going to right click the crowbar and hit Control Shift Alt C, origin to 3D cursor. That only changed the origin, which I call center for some reason. So now save, ignore this position. That was a miscalculation by me earlier. And now it's freaking positioned well. Holy moly, that took forever. And if we want, we can also delete, ah, oh, come on, the mesh here. But I recommend you don't actually delete uh, the cube model thing. That just makes things complicated. But we can get rid of this, this, and this. We can also rename the mesh here, crowbar, whatever these things are, and save again. So now that we have our crowbar, which is called wrench here, let's just rename this to crowbar. Let's go to content. No, wait, let's go to prefabs. Prefabs, weapons. Okay, and let's drag our crowbar in here. Very good. And now we go to content and make a copy of this by control dragging this. I'm gonna just rename, uh, rename this to crowbar. And in here, weapon entries, we're gonna, oh my, this is a lot. So we're gonna reduce this to one and rename this to crowbar. It's gonna use the prefab we just created, so crowbar which I think, yeah, this is in prefabs, this is in models, this is in content. So we definitely want the crowbar in weapons. In prefabs, we're going to change it to gear. We're going to keep usable by AI. So yeah, keep normal. Hopefully that will work. Sort priority, whatever. And close it down. And now let's click it. Make sure it's clicked and highlighted. Go to Ravenfield Tools, Content, Export, Selected Content Mod. Then this pops up. It's successful. If it's not successful, Read the error message. If it's not successful, go to console. Read the errors. Try to understand them. Watch my second video tutorial. Link is in the description in case you don't figure it out. I gave some help for basic errors. Anyways, now that we have this, let's go and start Ravenfield. So let's just pick our weapon we just made and hope that the AI also complies. Hey, 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 okay, so this guy has a crowbar, even though it looks quite tiny. Okay, good, good. This guy, mm, yep, he has a crowbar. What about you? You got a crowbar as well. Very good. Very good. But remember the bug where AI would have huge weapons and such? We're going to try to recreate it. So if we actually go to Blender, so what if we just scale this model up using um, object mode, not this, where we can edit the wireframes, but this mode. Let's scale it up to maybe 10. That looks good. If we just hit save and go back to Ravenfield in here, in Unity, and check the weapon, it's still the same size. For some reason, it's still this freaking same size. So everything must be good, right? Wrong. If we select our crowbar, go to Ravenfield Tools, Content, Export Selected Content Mod, does this thing again. What? This doesn't make any... So let's try to trigger this bug. Let's scale it up in uh, object mode to maybe 5. And then we hit Tab and scale it down to 0.2. If we hit Save now, uh, it might look like this in Unity. And it might look like this here. But if we export it, then it just doesn't work. It, I mean, it works as it should be, as opposed to the bug which it used to cause. So I guess uh, it's fixed now. So anyways, if you have a problem of weapons being too big in AI's hands, just make sure to edit the third person scale setting. It is in the latest tool pack. 
maybe you don't have it if you use an older one. Just make sure to set it to one and it should work. And if you use an old tool pack where that was a problem and not available, you will have to import the blend files and copy the settings, I suppose. So now I want to just test this weapon. Okay, let's see if the AI actually does attack us. So far, they seem to be quite blind. I don't know what's going on. This is a new feature? Is this a new bug? What What is happening? Do we need to cross some kind of invisible wall? I don't know, man. This is super confusing. Might be the map. Can you guys attack this guy? Yeah, they actually do it! Ha! Huh. So actually, if we did want to change the look, we would go to uh, Crowbar Wrench. Didn't I rename that? Let's call it Crow... Crowbar. So we go to this drop-down menu, Materials, and basically we change the first one to what we want, Metal. Metal is what I want. Uh, here we go, Metal, 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 Metal. Weapons metal. We're gonna get rid of these two just by setting this to one. And this one we can modify here with direct color modification. Let's go for some gray. That worked, right? And then we can make it more or less shiny and also change the metallic feature, which is less or more reflections, I believe. So yeah, we made changes that differ from the prefab. So in this case, we have to make another prefab. We have to go to prefabs weapons, drag it in again, and Call it, where is it? Crowbar 1. All right, let's just keep it Crowbar 1. What we could also have done is just go here, click wrench and make the modif modifications here. But whatever, it doesn't matter. As long as you have a prefab of the modifications you made. So we're going to just go back to content, click our crowbar uh, prefab and click crowbar and select here crowbar 1. All right, and now if we export this, uh, it does look different, but something is wrong. What the heck did I do? Yeah, okay. Well, I really don't know what I did, but this actually means that it was good that I kept the prefab. So let's go to prefabs, let's actually delete this one. And let's go to weapons and prefabs and drag the crowbar, not one, but the original one in here. Okay, so this one works. So now let's make the modifications. Let's delete this one because that's a broken one. Delete. Yeah. So let's go to crowbar once again uh, and unwrap this or whatever it's called. Click wrench, set this to one, change this to metal. Hey, where's metal? Metal from weapons. And this one is still different because it, it's kept the changes. Okay. And if we test it, it works. Phew. Okay. Man, you can easily break stuff in here. So I cannot export because I... Yeah, I'm just too eager. I'm trying to export, but I need to select the prefab, the content prefab. So let's go to content, select crowbar. Um, now this is missing the prefab because we deleted it. So let's go back and select the crowbar. We can check which one it is here. So prefab weapon, that's the right one. Not models, not content. We need the prefab weapons one. And if we content export now, Okay, we get this. Man, this thing can be confusing and, st and stressful. You just have to pull through. Okay, so now it works and it's animated correctly. Oh my goodness, that was quite an effort. Hey, you. Come on. Come on, man. Come on, man. Yeah, that's right. Come on, man. Oh, too close. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Take a sip of that. Alright, so now that I'm really freaking done with this, let's go and upload it. Let's go to uh, Publish to Steam Workshop. And this will pop up. Uh, you can resize it. I recommend you do. Let's connect to Steam. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Steam Workshop started false. We don't get an error message. What you have to do is manually start Steam if you haven't yet. So let's do that. Alright, here the heck we are. So if we press Connect Steam, it works. So... Uh, let's see, what can we do? Local items, I don't have any other items in here. Let's refresh. Okay, that doesn't matter. So let's just create a new item, okay? Create a new item. We get an ID for that. And we can set an image for that. I'm gonna be lazy and just make a screenshot. Yeah, I'm just gonna do this. Gonna edit it a little to make it square. Resize it to 320, because that's a safe number I have figured out. 
okay, resize layer and just export it. And I'm gonna export it as a PNG file, crowbar. Okay, so I'm not sure what happened here. Let's just connect to Steam again. Okay, load item. And now we're gonna change the image to this PNG file. If you use a bigger file, it will not work. Also, you can only use PNG, it seems. Make it 320 by 320 pixels, otherwise you will get an error. Let's call it crowbar and uh, crowbar like in Half-Life 2, just for showing off my mad skills. And this is where Creative Commons attribution becomes important. Michael Makovich from this place under Creative Commons attribution. Let's see which version. Uh, version 4. Point zero. And we need to click the crowbar because otherwise it will be stupid and not realize. And then we're gonna just write a first test of my first melee. And let's not hit public yet. Let's just say publish. And say OK. And it will actually open in Steam now, which is very nice. So what we can do now is we can change all except for the icon. We cannot change the icon. We have to do that in here. Uh, and we can change title and description stuff. Over here, we can add images, which I guess I'm gonna do. Let's just pick it in here, untitled, and upload it. Eight megabytes, yeah, should be fine. Here we go, save and continue. And you can see this currently visibility, current visibility hidden. This item will only be visible to you, admins, and anyone made as creator, marked as creator. We can change this so that friends can see it. All right, so this will only be visible in searches to you, your friends, and admins. And we can also make it public. Public. And then it's gone. And now everybody can see it on the uh, workshop of Ravenfield. Let's just go there and uh, browse. And most recent. Okay, and it does not appear quite yet. I don't know, maybe it triggered some kind of protection because I said Half-Life in the description. Who knows what Wolf did? What did you do, Wolf? Okay, how about... Oh yeah, yeah, so there's this issue sometimes that uh, Unity actually always gets interpreted as being inside of Ravenfield, so I'm just shutting that one down. Let's restart Steam, maybe that'll help. It totally appears to have helped. So Unity, because it connects to Steam, it uh, then uh, Steam thinks that while you're in Unity in a, in a project of a Ravenfield mod, that you are in the game, so you have to kind of close Unity and then it will be updated for some reason. All right, so now you can subscribe, others can subscribe, it's great. Crowbar by Ivan Plays. Get it now while it's brand brand new. Oh yeah. And subscribe to this channel, of course. So anyways, I hope this helped. Again, this is the third of by now three tutorials for modding weapons. I hope these are useful. Give us a like if you think so. And I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, ciao. Yeah, they actually do it. Ha. Huh. Go. Fight. Make me proud. Yeah! I like your bloodthirst. The map is called Medieval Massacre, and it is by 877-CASH-NOW. Call now!